Today I'm going to show you how I make a start off with a hand built cylinder that I've added texture to and then I put it onto the wheel to open it up. So I start off with this. Um, this is what I call my medium mug. I think it's somewhere in the 14 ounce range, depending on how much I open it up. So it's a nine and three quarter by six and a quarter um, rectangle. And I use a three and a quarter inch uh, cookie cutter to cut out the um, base. Uh, I have these cookie cutters that I got, um, I think on Amazon. And uh, they're great because they come in all different sizes. So I am going to be using a texture roller that I did using an extruded um, cylinder. They're not perfect, but they're really fun. Here's another one. And this is the one I'm going to use today. And this one is really off. I just noticed that. Um, and I sometimes I've done this with texture with uh, bisque stamps that I've made. And I find that all these get kind of sticky and, and on a wheel thrown piece, it's even more difficult. So I have a slab that I've rolled out. It's uh, sort of a soft leather hard. It will still flop down. And I, it's a, uh, about um, three eighths of an inch thick. I actually used uh, these um, sticks that I have that are three eighths of an inch thick to roll the slab out because I don't have a slab roller. Here's my knife. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this piece in half and use it for one mug. And normally what I do is I will um, be working on multiple mugs at a time so that I am doing like all the same step at one time. But today for this video, we're going to make the whole cylinder first and then move on to the next step. So I'm going to roll this out a little bit. I think this is actually wide enough. Yeah. So. I'm going to get it to about uh, a quarter inch. I would say if this is the first time you're doing this, I would leave it a little bit thicker uh, to start because it, it you want to get a feel for how uh, thick, how deep your texture is when you roll it in and how, um, how, uh, how much clay you want, depending on how much you want to roll the cylinder out. So this is going to be longer than what I'm doing. Hopefully I have enough here to do the, um, what do you call it? The base also. That's what I'm trying to get a little length, but it'll roll out a little bit more when I, okay, that should be good. When I, um, put the texture in. So one important thing is to make sure you keep your cylinder at an even, thickness because you don't want to have it be uneven when you're opening it up. And I've done that, had it uneven and it works, but it's not as good. So uh, we want to compress it on both sides. And I'm seeing that this side on the top is a little bit thicker, so I'm actually going to roll from that direction. So I'm going to turn this around. Okay. Now I'm going to take my roller, and because I want to have a little bit of a uh, part of it that's blank for the lip section without texture, I'm going to put this towards the bottom. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to center the roller on this piece of clay. So now the trick is pressing down hard enough to get a good impression throughout the whole thing. Um, so I try to do it pretty slowly, putting a fair amount of pressure on. And I always seem to get a spot that doesn't have anything in it. And I'll show you how in this case, with this roller, I kind of fix it. And it doesn't seem to matter much that it isn't... Um, so I think that because of this little flat section, I don't always get the texture. So I'm just going to take my roller and I'm going to just press in a little like that. That's fine. Now let's release the clay and I'm going to just, you saw this side stretched out, but this did not. So I'm just going to thin it out a little bit to kind of even it out. And that's mostly to get this line straight over here. So I'm going to put my um texture down and i'm leaving 
about an inch. This is really a personal preference over here that has no uh, texture on it. You have to sort of figure that one out for yourself. And I just want to make sure I have enough for my circle, and I do. I'll do that afterwards. Get my knife and cut this out. So if you want to, you can, oh, this is craft foam, by the way, this over here. I've used it a lot. Um, it's inexpensive and very durable. I love using it as patterns. Okay, so we'll cut it out. If you want, you can draw the line out first with a pin tool or something like that and then cut it so that you don't do things like I just did there. But you can also just do it like this. All right, so we can get rid of this clay. And make up our pattern. And I think I need a little bit more here. Eh, all right, that's fine. And then we're going to cut out a circle. You can pick the spot you like best. Some of it might get um, rubbed away in the process, but it's at least you have something on the bottom. And now is a good time before you forget if you have a stamp to stamp your signature in there. So that's what I did. Okay. Put that aside. And I'm going to just take my fingers and smooth it along the edges just a little bit. Okay. And I use this tool by um, Sim. I think it's called an edge cutter and it gives you a nice uh, angle cut and I'm going to cut on both sides so I get this angle over here I'm going to do a little where I'm going to join the cylinder I'm going to take my um, scoring tool which is just part of a serrated rib that I cut off I'm going to score this side I'm going to flip it over and you can see the clay has gotten quite soft from all this working with it so it won't be difficult to put it into the cylinder shape. Okay, and then we want to give it a little bit of memory that this is going to be a cylinder. So I'm going to just carefully, not too tight, give it a little roll on either side. So hopefully it will say I'm a cylinder and not pop open. Okay, now we can stand this up and I'm going to sit slip which needs a little mixing and I'm going to put slip on both sides and put the cylinder together so I do have a slightly thicker one side than the other which is too bad I seem to be having that problem today it's still workable. So I'm just going to pinch my one hand on the inside, pushing from the outside towards my inside hand. Get that slip out of the way. I'm going to flip it over to do the other side. You want to be... Um, so if you look at this, you'll see that it's connected right so it's so there isn't like a f extra fat section there it's it's all just um the two sides of the angle are flush against each other on either side so i'm going to smooth this out a little bit to um because when you open it up <laughs> it tends to uh accentuate that line and you get a split and it's going to happen no matter what i haven't gotten it to the point yet where you don't see it at all but at least um, if you rub this in a little, then it, it works better. And then you could always just put the handle on this side so that you're not, it's not as obvious. Okay, so the next step is the base. So I have this um, rounder that I made based on a video by Bill Van Gilder. So that you can do that to get this base into the round or if you don't want to go that route you can use like a yogurt cup you just have one the right size so now this piece is the base is round ish at least close i'm going to take my serrated rib and 
and get that ready. And then I'm going to get my cylinder. I'm just going to smooth the edges out a little bit. Not my cylinder, my circle. So all I'm doing is just rubbing my thumb against it. Flip it over, do the same. I don't know if this is even necessary because of the next step, but it's just a habit I've gotten into. <laughs> Clean up the edge. And then I'm going to take my serrated rib and serrate this side. <laughs> Text. Okay. And we'll get some slip on here. Some slip on here. So when I'm doing these, I tend to do a bunch at a time. I'll cut out all the pieces and then I'll uh, cut the edges and make the cylinders. And then the final thing is putting the, the base on. So I like to wiggle this a little bit to get a good secure um, connection. And then I would like to let it sit for a bit. So I'm going to let this sit and I'm going to come back to it in a few minutes and do the, the last steps for the cylinder before before we'd put it on the wheel. So the cylinder's been sitting for a couple of minutes um, with the top on, and I'm going to um, attach it the rest of the way. So I've got my pony roller and I put it on a banding wheel, just makes it a little easier. If you don't have one, that's fine. You can just turn the piece as you go. So what I like to do is I press down to get a good, not very lightly, Keep in mind, this is soft clay. And then I roll over. And what that does is it gives a little extra clay over onto the side that, that adds a little thickness at that um, base. Okay. Let me show you what that looks like. So you can see it's almost like it was pinched down. And you don't have to do it that way. That's just the way I like to do it. And then I take my roller and I just smooth it a little bit that little bit of clay and then we flip it over and at this point you can see this top is pretty wonky so I'm gonna use my yogurt cup and I have this um, oh first I'm gonna use my finger down here at the base to smooth it out smooth it in I've got my hand on the other side while I'm turning it so that it doesn't move too much Okay, and I am going to use this brush. It's a Catalyst Number no. Four um, Poly. Why can't I read this? Poly Tip Bristle, short bill birch or something like that. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush with a little bit of water on it, and I'm going to go down to the base and just go around so that I can sort of um, get that inside seam to be uh, nice and secure. Also, we taking care of the outside, we want to do the inside. And then I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just rub it with my, this hand on the, my left hand on the outside along the inside seam just to smooth it out. And, you know, I'll take the brush this way and I'll go this way and I'll just try to get rid of that line so that it doesn't get in my way when I put this on the wheel. And then the last step I like to do is let this sit overnight so that it gets nice and, um, blended together. You can use your finger too, where you can reach nice and blended together before I put it on the wheel. So we'll be back when this is set. So the cylinder has been sitting overnight covered in plastic and is still, um, pre leather hard, but it's a little, it's a little stiff. You can see you can wiggle it still. So what I'm going to do is just check my seams, see if, if things are uh, decently connected which it looks like they are on this one, and maybe do a little um, evening here where the uh, seam is on the outside. Just do a little, not evening, uh, <laughs> making it more better, a better connection. And I'm going to take my uh, yogurt cup and round this again. And then we're going to stick this onto the wheel. So to do that, we're going to wet the bat. I have to clean it first. Do it, put a little water on here. You don't need too much, but you just want a little bit. And then I'm going to 
uh, move this around until I feel it start to suction. So you can see how it, it's a little harder to push. And then it's not stuck yet. And then I'm going to put my finger here and this is to get it to see how centered it is. And this is about a crazy fast centering. This time it worked. But most of the time I'm just constantly adjusting to get it in the right spot. So the next thing I'm going to do oops, is take my long handled brush and press down to help suction it a little more. And you know, you can go from the center out and that'll hopefully get it in place. Again, make sure that it's still centered. And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna push towards, the, towards this little lump of, you know how there's that little extra bit of clay there? I'm gonna push towards there and then down. So my finger's a little above the, the lump of clay. And then I'm gonna push the lump of clay down and, and push it down to the wheel head and get a little bit more suction to hold the, the, the cylinder in place. Okay, and then make sure it's still centered. Now, the top may not look centered because this is a handmade cylinder, it's not perfect. All right, that's pretty good. And it's close enough. And I'm gonna take my brush and do a little bit of rubbing on that seam, but I think it's pretty good. Maybe do the rounding again. Just give it a little help. And then I'm gonna get my sponge and you can see how wonky it is, but I'm going to thin this out a bit, pull it up, thin it out, and ignore the wonkiness. That's the hard part when doing this, ignoring the wonky. And, you know, we'll get it close to, to centered. It'll look at a glance as having been done on the wheel, but if you look closely, you'd be able to tell that it was uh, hand built and then put onto the wheel. It's ne I can never get them like perfectly exact and that's okay. And I'm just going to use my rib a little bit to help it get centered. Okay. That's pretty good. And the next step. So uh, let me show you the rib I like to use. So I use this, this rib and I'm going to hold it upside down. And what I'm trying to do is push out when I shape the mug is I'm going to push out a little bit at the top and as I get further down I'm going to belly it out more and the thing you need to be careful of and why I suggest that you start with a thicker slab initially is to not push it out too much and uh, split the seam or put a hole anywhere in it because you tried to thin it out when you were trying to get the shape you want believe me I've done it many times in fact I did it earlier today so now I'm going to take the rib upside down because this is the shape this is kind of the shape that I'm going for, and that's why I use this rib. And I'm gonna push a little bit at the top, and then as I move down, where my hand barely fits in here, I'm gonna push harder at the bottom, so you'll see it belly out ooh, more in the bottom. Sometimes the rib gets away from me. Yeah, it's a little slippery. Okay, let's try that again. So I hold, my, hold the rib like this, because it's, Usually I don't lose it when I do that, but you know, and I like a faster wheel, but you don't have to, but I find that I tend to make a more even pushing out of the cylinder when I do that. Ignore what's happening at the top. Ignore the bumps. There's a lot you have to ignore when you're doing this. Do pay attention to what's going on with your seam. You might have to smooth it a little. And then always keep stop and check to see how things are going because it's really easy to lose lose the um, control and either push out not where you want to push out or go right through the clay because it is on the thinner side. All right, so I'm pushing at the bottom right now and I'm just going to go up a little bit to make sure that the curve is somewhat even. All right, and I'm almost there. I'm going to belly out a little bit more, but I want to check to make sure I still have clay so I can feel that there is still clay. Okay. Well, let's just belly the bottom a tiny bit more and then come up. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to work on the rim. Ooh, that jiggled a little. I hope it's still attached. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Now, 
The idea with the rim is you want to get it um, so that it's balanced with the base. And I find that if I leave this too narrow at the top for the bottom, it looks unbalanced, or if I make it too wide. So I try to get them to be about the same. So I'm going to, um, all right, I think we're almost there. And I'm using a pretty dry rib right now. That's just me. You don't have to do that. If you prefer it to be wet, do it wet. Get my chamois. And um, I put a finger on either side of the chamois, so I'm kind of pinching it down on the rim. And I pinch a tiny bit to thin out just the top of the rim a bit because that's where your mouth is going to go. And you want it to be a comfortable um, connection, a comfortable... Uh, not too fat rim and uh, just comfortable on your mouth. So you really need to pay attention to that. And I've seen people do this a bunch of different ways, but this, this way tends to work for me. Um, so it looks, it gives the appearance of being thinner than the whole thing, but it's it still has thickness in, in the rim. It's just that it's more comfortable on your mouth. So now let's take a look. So I think I just want to do a tiny bit more shaping on this. I think that's good and then we're going to trim the bottom all right so for this I got my wooden knife and I'm not going to take a lot because there's not a lot of clay here but I want to get rid of that little glob that I put down there so I'm just going to cut away be very careful because this is another spot where you could end up taking too much clay and end up with not enough there to hold it together and this might be close <laughs> that was a little bit more than I meant, but that's okay. I think we're all right. Now, at this point, it might pop off the wheel, so you need to be careful. But if it doesn't uh, um, pop off now, just leave it on there until it's enough that you can wiggle it off. See, see how it's still stuck to the wheel? You don't want to try to get it off because what you'll end up doing is separating it um, here at the base, the cylinder from the base. All right, so that's it for this step, and we're gonna let it sit for a bit until it's ready to come off the bat. I forgot one step. I like to re-accentuate this line here, which, you know, it's just for this particular pattern. So I take my, my uh, rib, the point of the rib, and I just follow where that line was. Be careful not to press onto the texture, and then I'll just take my finger and smooth it out a little. And let's go. Oh, and there you go. Now it popped off. So we can do the next step. And the next step is um, I push in the base a little. And this is a little too soft to do this. But when it's a little harder, I'm going to smooth this all out over here. Make sure there's a good, good, um, that it's nice and smooth. And then it'll be ready for a handle when it's dry enough for to take it because now it's too soft. So the mug is sitting and, um, well, there's more than one, but sitting and drying, and it's still a little soft leather hard. I want it to get a little stiffer, but it's time to pull some handles. So what I like to do is I have an extruder. So I use this one inch hole to extrude long coils, and then I cut them into pieces that are somewhere in the five to six inch range. And um, if you don't have an extruder, you might like to do this with um, the same method by uh rolling out coils, which is what I used to do. So then I like to take the handle to get it closer to the shape that I'm gonna be, and I just slam it down a little, and that flattens the sides. So now I have close, again, closer to the handle shape that I want. Pull the bucket over. Okay, so now we're gonna pull the handle. So you wanna get a good grip at the top, and make sure your hand at the top is dry because if it's wet, it's going to slip out of your hand. And dunk your hand into the water and start to pull. And here, you don't want to squeeze too tight. You're just kind of pulling a little bit, making sure your hand is wet, um, turning your hand. It's in this position. So you want to do both sides. So I turn my hand and the clay so that I'm... Uh, pulling it evenly on either side. And when I get some length in it, I will take my thumb that's also wet 
and I'll just go down the center. You don't have to do this. I just like handles that have that line in it, that um, indentation. So then I'll continue to pull. And every few times I will put my hand down the center again, my thumb down the center, just to make sure I'm not losing it. And sometimes to thin it out a little, I'll just take my fingers in a pinch. And again, you want to do both sides. And that got rid of the indentation a little, so I'm going to put it back. And what often happens to me is I end up with this little lump of clay at the bottom. I don't know why, so I'm just going to pinch it off. And uh, when I'm satisfied with the length of the handle, and the way it looks, it's ready to dry. So what you can do is you can do, you can use that little hunk of clay and you can put it down on a board um, sitting down like this. But what I do is I have a tube, um, one of those tubes that posters come in and I put it over, it's a, I don't know, it's probably four or five inch wide and I like to put them over that. So I'm going to take my clay, my, my um, handle and put it over my left hand and with my right hand I'm going to pinch away all that excess clay. Then I'm going to just let it dry and it gets a nice curve on it but I, I don't, I, I'll let it be still soft leather hard when I attach the handle. So I'll be back when the mugs and handles are ready to go. So I'm ready now to attach the handle. The mug is um, leather hard. Just this, this part's nice and stiff and this is still a little bit soft, but it's ready to go. And I like to try and smooth that seam out a little. On the bottom, I pushed it in. I'm not sure I showed you that earlier. Just a little bit so that there's, um, so you can see that the only the edges will touch the table and now that texture won't be on the table. Okay, so I'm using a uh, towel just to give it some support. So I've got the handle, it's still bendy, so it's a soft leather hard. And the first thing I do is I hold it in my hand away from uh, my, uh, with the knife away from me and I cut it at an angle cut off some of the clay and I'll also trim a little bit of this edge off because it's a little too much clay and then we're going to take it's you can see it's still soft enough to do this I'm going to pull some clay forward so there's a little bead of clay there that I'll use uh, when I attach the handle and maybe smooth this out flatten it a little and score it Okay, so now it's ready to attach. So I'm pretty um, consistent in where I put my handles on this particular shape mug. So I'm just going to score at the top, and I do that right at the um, part where the uh, where there's no texture, and then I go down to the bottom just where the curve, where it starts to um, come down in the curve. And I will score there. Okay, so now that's ready. And I've got some slip. I'm going to put it on the top one, the top area, because we haven't sized out the handle yet for the bottom. And I'm going to push the handle into the, my, my left hand is supporting the mug, even though it is pretty stiff, and my right hand is pushing towards it. And I'm going to wiggle it a little so you see how it's moving and at some point it stops moving and I know that I have a good connection and then with my thumb or fingers I'm just going to smooth down a little bit um, here I don't know if I'm getting yeah like that and now I'm going to leave this alone for a moment at the top normally what I do is I do multiple handles at one time so that I um, we'll do like this on every mug and then I'll go do the next step and then I'll come back when this is set up a little bit. But for today, we'll just do the one mug. So you can see this is way too big a handle right now. So I'm going to cut back some of the handle. And the way you do this one is you want the angle you're going to cut towards you so that the angle is going to be such that it will sit flat against the mug. So I'll put it down here and I'll look again and it's still 
too big. So I'm going to cut a little bit more off. One of the things that I heard one potter describe was that if this distance here is more than half of this distance here, then the handle is too big. I mean, it really depends on what you're going for. And I mostly do it by eye. So I'm going to cut it towards myself again. And that might have been just a little too much. So you see it's at an angle. No, no, that's probably good. Okay. And I'm going to see if the mug looks good at that position and I think that's a good place so I'm just going to score underneath and the advantage of having this sitting down like this is that you can see that your handle to make sure that your handle is straight and I'm going to do the same thing I did at the top which is put my hand in here right and I'm going to wiggle it around make sure I have a secure connection and then um uh, using my thumb, I'm going to just blend it in a little. Okay, so now we can go back to the top. So for this part, I use two tools. I've got the rubber tip tool, and I've got a stiff brush that I used in an earlier part of the video. And see all that little bit of extra clay there? I'm going to just blend it in. Maybe push it down a little. And blend it in and then that's going to give a nice um, solid you know there isn't like a little gap there and it makes the handle look like it came you know was pulled out from the pot which is what I like to do some people like to show the connection I like to blend in the connection so it's really what whatever you prefer and then I'm going to take the stiff brush and just rub it in a little bit more because my rubber tool doesn't get in there very well. Okay. And the finger, always a good tool to use. Just want to make sure everything looks okay. Sometimes I get a little bit of nail doing something I don't like, but this looks pretty good. And then we're going to basically do the same thing at the bottom. I'm going to take the flat end of this tool and I'm going to just um, slide it in here and the other side and make sure I have a good um, connection there too. And I'm just going to take that brush and, you know, sometimes you might need to add a little water to the brush. But let's see. And... That's pretty much it. Now we've got a handle and it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to dry this um, sometime. Oh, one other thing is you can take your finger and just accentuate that curve if you want to have that little lift over there. So now I'm going to let this sit uh, set up under plastic for a day or two. As I said, I'm in a garage and it's pretty humid in here. So I'll probably just let it go for a day. But I want all the clay you know the different parts to meld together before I leave them uncovered so if you're in a dry area I would leave them covered for longer than a day but I guess you'll figure that out based on what your um, humidity level is like anyway that's it and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching